long past the hour of Compline, the last prayers of the night, a sound aroused me to a confused state of wakefulness. Because of the utter darkness and the painful throbbing in my head, I knew not where I was. Though unable to see, I could smell the air and realised I wasn't at my home. Nor was I in the fields where I often slept with the ox. Only when I sniffed again did I become sure of the woodland smells and cloying air. The rain had ceased, but it was as if night itself had begun to sweat. Then, in a burst, I recalled my mother's death and burial, my leaving the cemetery and the priest, my plunge into the woods. I remembered tripping, falling. Putting a hand to my forehead, I felt a welt and a crust of hardened blood. Though my touch made me wince, the pain banished the remaining dizziness. I realised I was in the forest and lost. My tunic was cold and wet. Lifting my head, I looked about. Midst the tangle of trees, I saw a flickering light. Puzzled, I came up on my knees to see better. But save that flame, all was murk and midnight mist, and silence lay as thick as death. In haste, I made the sign of the cross and murmured protective prayers. Mind, Godly folk had no business beyond their lawful homes at such a time. Night was a mask for outlaws, hungry wolves, the devil and his minions. Then who or what, I asked myself, had caused the sound that had brought me to my senses? It was my curiosity, another name my mother had often said for Satan, that made me want to see what was there. Despite fear of discovery, I crept through the woods.